Hey everyone, this is Sky from Nifty, and today I'm going to be giving you a brief product overview. If you have questions as it pertains to your workflow, I very much encourage you to set up a demo so I can customize one of these specifically for you. But in the meantime, this is just kind of a high level uh, overview as to how Nifty works and some of my favorite tips and tricks inside of Nifty. So we're going to start actually on the portfolio level here. What we're looking at is what's called a portfolio, and that's a collection of projects as it pertains to a certain initiative. It might be a branch in your organization. If you are working in client management, which Nifty excels at, this might be uh, each of your clients if you have multiple projects with that client, or this might be your account manager's portfolio and all the different projects that they're set to oversee. But the benefit of portfolios is that it allows you to group projects together, especially with a team. So if I were to create a new project, I can optionally invite everyone in this portfolio really quickly and reduce some of the friction when creating new projects as we go. So I'm actually going to jump into a project right now and we start out on the home screen. What the home screen is, is windowed insight into the different modules within a project being milestones, tasks, discussions, docs, and files. And you might be saying very astutely right now, Sky, this is only windowed insights into milestones and discussions. And you'd be correct. But that's because I have these other widgets disabled. I can actually control what I want to see on every project I can rearrange these and the best part is that these are just for me so you might want to see something completely different in this project on your home screen and so go for it go nuts you can have whatever you want here so it's really a great way to kind of give uh, get specific insights across these different modules without having to click through them but we're actually going to go through them one by one so we can learn a little bit more about them I'm actually going to collapse the sidebar here so we start out on the milestone screen and what milestones are are the different uh, kind of goals of our project or, or really phases another way to think about it and within each of these milestones are the tasks that we need to accomplish to get there so we can see when we complete tasks we get a little closer to our goal of completing this milestone if the date is overdue we see this turns red and now we can really easily move these around and so there's a lot of flexibility and value in these because you're able to see where you stand and quickly adjust that. So let's say, oh, we got feature six. Here's a new task, create it really in quickly, or like instantly. And it could be as easy as a checklist where you go through and knock these off and you get that bar moving. Um, you'll see that we automatically give a due date that of the end date of the milestone and that's to make your life a little easier so you don't have to go through and give each of these tasks a specific due date. You can of course go in and adjust these and so long as it is inside the parameters of this milestone, you can adjust these due dates. And this gives added value, and we'll see this a little later, on the My Tasks screen. And so we can see, again, these are really high level. We can just kind of go through these uh, as a click, or we can move them across our different task lists. So what, what that really means is, and I'm actually gonna, we're gonna see our task lists in one view called the Swim Lane View, and this is actually really popular amongst developers because it gives our different milestones in the cross section with our task list and so this is a good way to juggle epics and really different uh, phases of your development projects but as we go along like I was mentioning these are controlling tasks on our task board screen and so we can see before on milestones we saw to do in progress review and completed and review is actually a list that I created custom and slid over here and that's because a lot of people do have a review process and one of the most valuable features in Nifty I find is the ability to assign someone to a list. This has a lot of benefit when you're talking about something like review. So when I finish a feature, let's say I went to in progress and now it's in review, we can see this is automatically assigning all the people that it was in these lists. This one had a bunch of people assigned to it. So now we can see there's a whole cluster of people assigned, including Shiv, who knows to come in and take action on this as he will get a notification via browser, uh, web, and mobile, assuming he has all of those downloaded. He can control those notifications in his user settings as well, so he can get specific insights the way he wants them. And so when we go into a different feature, or into a a uh, task we can see there's a lot of different items we can take action on we actually can create subtasks so there might be two or three things that apologies for my typos here feature 
feature too. There we go. And we can actually give them subtasks we can complete, bring files right on here. I really like this colorful bird. So we'll bring this colorful bird on here. Um, as well as we get an entire action history on this task to keep track of who's done what on this task and when. This is exceptionally important when you're working with clients because you can kind of track the entire process, including your client's coming ability to come in and say, this was moved into review and the client then moved it to completed. And that's kind of a sign off. So it's, again, another great way to work with clients here in Nifty. We're going to move over now to our task, or I'm sorry, our discussions module. And this is where a lot of the project oriented discussion is had. As we saw before, you're able to discuss right on a task and that's great for pointed feedback. But project discussions are a great place to have those high level conversations, be it uh, replacing standups with a couple lines of text or just kind of general questions to make sure everyone's steered in the correct direction. This is where clients are going to come in and work with you as clients are brought in on a per project basis and don't actually join the team. The core distinctions there are one, they won't even see the name of the portfolio they're a part of, only the project or projects they are in if you've invited them to more than one. And they also will not have access to direct messaging as that is for you and your team members. So those are some of the barriers you'll be looking at when you're bringing guests in. But that said, guests have a lot of power in Nifty. They're able to go through and assign and complete tasks. And that way they have a good sense of that workload and they can get their hands dirty in the workflow as well, especially important as we covered on completion, which actually brings me to one of my points here. Um, you are able to hide milestones and tasks from guests and any tasks assigned to a milestone that is hidden will also be hidden. And so that's a good way to work with your internal deadlines um, as you report and then kind of have more of delivery oriented tasks once you've maybe gotten some of the, the nitty gritty of creation out of the way internally with your team. But it allows you to keep that all in one project rather than have to duplicate it and run it in two separate places. And so Another fun feature in discussions is the ability to launch a document from here. And this is a good way to get everyone who's in this project automatically involved in a document. This is great for any just creative. You want to get creative going down something all hands on deck collaborative. This is the best way to do it. But we're actually going to go over to the docs tool and this is going to give us more options when creating documents. As you can see, we have a mixture of documents being our what I like to call the native nifty notepad. And this is a lightweight document tool that I can bring other people in to collaborate on. But if I want more of a word processor, I can actually create and edit a Google Doc right here in Nifty. Same with Google uh, Sheets and presentations. And this has the added benefit of being able to store this with your Nifty project. I can still access my team chat from here. Um, and I can still access and edit this document from the Google tool. So it's just, again, it's a great way to file everything in one place and consolidate everything into one browser tab. Similarly, all the files that were brought into this project throughout the course of it are going to aggregate here in the file section. So we don't need to do duplicate uploads in our discussion tool. Um, as we know, we all do or used to do if you use a dedicated discussion tool, not naming any names. And so we can see how the different items here in Nifty work together to really automate the process of collaboration and reporting as you go along. So it's not just a place where you come in and update what you've done, but you've come in and hash out these ideas in real time and you can kind of get these insights however you want to see them. Now this is great to manage one project, but we also want to manage all of our projects, which is where the overview comes into play. This is all the different milestones running in tandem across all of the projects I'm a part of, which again, as a reminder, there might be projects in here that I'm not a part of. I'm not the owner of Nifty, so for all I know, there are, but I don't know, and that's kind of the beauty of it, right? I can also filter this down to a specific portfolio. So if I want to say, I just want to see what my marketing and content looks like, and again, it's that milestone experience where I can open this up and see uh, what needs to be done, who needs to do it. You can see these are locked due to a dependency, but I can still go in and learn more about them so I can get a good sense of what needs to be done across the different initiatives again, by portfolio or just across the entire organization. Similarly, I can come and engage the workloads on my team through this workloads tool. And I can filter this. We can see we all have a few overdue tasks to do, so nobody's perfect, even those who create project management tools. But I can go in and get a sense of what Ivan needs to do across his different projects and what his deadlines are. 
Similarly, I can go through and filter this by a certain stretch of days. So I want to say, let's just say through the end of this week, I want to see what people's workloads look like and I can kind of adjust that accordingly. A good way to gauge short and long term work. So I'm involved in a bunch of different projects and rather than go through a bunch of different task boards, I want to know what I need to do every day. So I come in and reference my tasks and this is going to sort all of my projects based on, I'm sorry, my tasks based on due date across all the different projects I'm a part of. And that's one of the beauty to using that milestone tool to automatically give deadlines as it's automatically going to give me deadlines here in my tasks. So I know if nothing else, these are kind of the last day that I need or that I have to take care of these tasks. And we all know that we probably do that a little bit more than we should. As we can see here, I am working on the product walkthrough video. And so I'm actually a little ahead of schedule, but I'm going to go proactively tick that one off because I think this one's in the books. And so we can see how really everything works together nifty to answer questions as to where do we stand within and across our projects and what can I do to further these projects and what do most importantly, perhaps what I'm doing, how does it provide context to these different projects? Now I'm going to go through and give you some of the little fun tips and tricks I have in Nifty to kind of make things, uh, maybe approach them a little bit differently. First one, I don't use this one a whole lot, but I know some people are super hyped on dark mode. And I think dark mode looks awesome when it comes to our milestones. You get all these cool colors. Kind of reminds me of the Matrix or something. So if you feel compelled to work at night and don't want to burn your eyes out of your skull, might I recommend dark mode? One of the things we went through earlier is uh, um, kind of how you can onboard tasks really easily through a milestone. So when you go through and create a project, you might go through and um, dev phase two, you might go through and onboard all the different things you need to do from a milestone perspective from get go. And so you can see the entire journey and maybe you add these tasks later on. So where I think we're at feature seven and so on feature eight and again, this is a really easy way to go about doing this, but I know not everyone does this. And so an, an alternate approach is to go to your task board and actually create what I call kind of the backlog methodology. And so what we can do is create a whole new task list. Let's create um, dev phase three. And you might approach things differently. You might not approach them milestone first. You might approach them task first. And that way you can help break them into milestones. So let's say we've got feature eight, feature nine, and feature 10. Now you'll instantly notice that these are not getting due dates like the ones we were creating in our tasks, or our milestones rather, because they don't have that parameter to work off of. These are just kind of onboarding tasks. But again, this is a great way to backlog all the different things you know you need to do. And then as you go through these different lists, you can move them into to do in progress if that's your workflow. But one of my favorite features here is the ability to say, I want to set this task list as a milestone. And so now, you know, we can adjust these due dates, but it gave it a due date and all of these tasks now have due dates because this task list is a milestone. Dev phase three, here it is, and we can kind of move this right into place. So this is a great way to start kind of tasks backward rather than uh, milestones first. And there's really no wrong way to do it. You can approach this in whichever order works for you. This is also really great for imports. If you're bringing stuff in from Trello, obviously they don't have milestones. So you can kind of organize everything into task lists and instantly swap them back into milestones and make your life a lot easier. Of course, you can go through on a per task basis, ones that aren't assigned to a milestone and do that as well. So you don't need to do it in this bulk way, but this is again, one of the many ways Nifty has to automate your different, um, different milestones. This gets pretty interesting too when you start combining with some of the other automations such as task list assignments. So um, if you, let's say you have a recurring task in a task list that is a milestone, Every time, you know, if I want this to be created every Monday and then this is automatically going to be uploaded to a milestone, that's kind of assigned to me in this way because the list is assigned to me. So you can see how the different mechanisms in Nifty work together to kind of customize whatever workflow you can really dream up. Another thing I want to go over are dependencies in Nifty. We have two types of dependencies. We have task dependencies and we have milestone dependencies. I really like milestone dependencies because they're really block oriented. So for example, I'm gonna go through and set this dependency for dev phase two on development phase one. And you can see all of these tasks here locked. I can still go in and edit them, but 
I'm unable to complete them until all the tasks in the previous milestone are completed. So we can see that nifty little arrow drop into place. I complete it. Now I go through and these are all unlocked. So again, this is a bulk way to lock tasks um, across nifty, a good way to enforce kind of high level stages, especially with client approval. You can say, look, uh, I can't move forward until we, we check this one off. What's your feedback on it? It's a good way to kind of chart overall um, progress. But you also might find that doing a linear task dependency, so I want to set this based on a specific task, um, let's say due diligence. So now this one is locked and cannot be completed until the two di due diligence task is completed, in which case now it's unlocked. And so there's, again, two different ways to do it. Tasks, I think of as a little bit more linear because I can make it X, then Y, then Z, where milestone dependencies are bulk. I do them in large clusters based on that milestone's completion. Well, if you've not deduced it by now, I can really talk seemingly endlessly about Nifty, and there's a lot we did not cover on this video, so I would very much encourage you to reach out to me to schedule something so we can discuss a little bit more pointed to your workflow. Again, there's a lot more Nifty can do. I'm just trying to give you the crash course here, and there's always room to grow and expand what's possible in here. It's up to your dreams. All right, take care.